Welcome to the video for payback period. Payback period is one of the key methods used to rank projects and to decide whether or not they should be accepted for inclusion in the capital budget. Let us look at the definition of payback period. So the payback period is defined as the expected number of years required to recover the original investment. So let us understand this using a simple example. Suppose you are going to college every day, that is seven days a week. You do not have a mode of transport that you own and hence you take a ride on a shared cab every day and spend rupees 10 on it daily as payment for the service. So basically the fare of shared cab is 10 rupees per day. Now let's say you decide to buy a cycle of your own which costs rupees 1000. So cost of bicycle is 1000 rupees. So if you hadn't bought the bicycle, you would keep on paying rupees 10 daily to the shared cab owner. Now within how many days would you recover the original investment in this case? So for each day, you are paying 10 rupees. So in how many days would you pay 1000 rupees to the shared cab owner? So cross multiplication. So this is 1 into 1000 is equal to 10 into x or x is equal to 1000 divided by 10 which is 100. So in 100 days you would have paid the shared cab owner a thousand rupees as fare of the cab. In other words, it will take you 100 days to recover the cost of the bicycle. Because now you are going to save those 10 rupees that you would be paying daily. So you would have paid thousand rupees by the hundredth day if you were using the shared cab. Now that you have bought the bicycle, at the end of the hundredth day, you would have recovered the original investment. And then after that, the money that you would have spent on the shared cab after hundred days is now your savings. So here, in order to find out the payback period, we divided thousand by 10. Or in other words, we divided the original investment, which is 1000, by the periodic cash flow, which is 10. So what we did is, we divided original investment by the periodic cash flow. Now in this case, the cash flow of 10 rupees per day was constant or even for all the days. But what if the periodic cash flow is not an even cash flow? So this formula for payback is valid only in case of even cash flow. Now let's take an example of an uneven cash flow. Let's say that a roadside vendor buys 50 radio sets for 1000 rupees each. So basically his cost is 50 radio sets into 1000 rupees which becomes 
fifty thousand rupees. So this is the cost. Now he sets a selling price of two thousand rupees for each radio set. Now he sells twenty radio sets on the first day. 15 on the second day, 10 on the third day, and 5 on the fourth day. So 20 plus 15 is 35, plus 10 is 45, plus 5 is 50. So now his cash flow from selling the radio sets is on the first day 20 into 2000. which is equal to 40,000 on the second day 15 into 2000 which is 30,000 third day 10 into 2000 20,000 rupees and the fourth day 5 into 2000 which is 10,000 rupees. Now we need to find out in how many days does he recover these 50,000 rupees which was his original investment. So at the end of the first day he has 40,000 rupees. This is all in rupees. And at the end of the second day he has 40,000 plus 30,000 which is 70,000 rupees. So he has recovered his entire original investment on the second day. So let's assume that the incoming cash flow is evenly distributed during each day. So what does that mean? So let's take the second day. So let's say this is the second day. This is the beginning of the day and this is the end. So here we are assuming that the amount of 30,000 rupees is incoming into this day on an even basis. So at the beginning of the day he has 0 rupees, at the end of the day he has 30,000 rupees. If we say the mid of the day then he'll have half the amount which is 15,000 rupees. If we take one fourth or the first one fourth of the day he'll have 7500 rupees if we take the three fourth of the day he will have 22500 rupees so basically the incoming cash flow is evenly distributed during the entire day so with that assumption the payback period can be calculated as payback is equal to duration before full recovery so duration before full recovery plus un recovered cost at the start of the period divided by cash flow during that period. So we saw that the money is recovered on the second day. So after the first day and before the end of the second day. So duration before full recovery is first day. So this is one. Now at the end of the first day he has recovered 40,000 rupees. Now what is the unrecovered cost at the start of the period? So 50,000 minus 40,000, so 10,000 is remaining. So 10 
thousand divided by cash flow during that period. So cash flow during the second day is thirty thousand. So basically, what this is meaning is, in the entire day, we have collected thirty thousand rupees. At what point during the day will we collect ten thousand rupees? So, as we have assumed that the incoming cash flow is evenly distributed during each day, if the entire duration is considered one. And one is equal to thirty thousand, then ten thousand will be somewhere here, which will become one third of the entire cash flow and one third of the duration. That is one third of the day. So this gets cancelled. So this becomes one plus one by three. This can be written as one point three three. Days, or one third of twenty-four hours, since this is a day, which is of twenty-four hours. So, one by three into twenty-four. Three eights are twenty-four. So this becomes one day and eight hours. So this is the formula for payback when the Cash flow is uneven. Now, in the second part of the video for payback period, we will look at the advantages and disadvantages of using this method.